age 749. Having tracked a signal from the radar she invented, Bulma drives through the winding roads of the southeast mountains in search of a Dragon Ball. Her search leads her straight into a strange young boy with a tail named Son Goku. Little did Bulma know- Hey! I thought I told you to get out of here! Wait, wait, but I thought I just wasn't allowed to do the re- ah! All right, we're just gonna jump straight into this one. This is probably the single most obvious entry in the series thus far, and with a reason that's going to sound super familiar. Just like Dead Zone did with Dragon Ball Z, Curse of the Blood Rubies starts on the same day as the original Dragon Ball series. But where Dead Zone was a nice self-contained story that basically just replaced the Raditz fight, Blood Rubies replaces the entire first arc of Dragon Ball. We're talking Goku meeting Bulma, although to be fair, Bulma has a motorcycle instead of a car and one Dragon Ball instead of two. They meet Oolong, then Yamcha and Pua, then Master Roshi, who inadvertently teaches Goku the Kamehameha, the only change to any of this is the antagonist is now a big glutton instead of a tiny man-child. Oh, and instead of Oolong wishing for underwear, Bulma freaking blows him up from the inside with Shenron. Or at least that's what it looks like, but instead he just turned back into a weird little bumpy man with a questionable head design. Hey, are we allowed to show that? So much of this movie is a remix of the first arc, and over the past six years, oh my god, I've been doing this for six years? I have since very much come to realize this is just what Shonen movies do. They're either recaps or previews of arcs to come. But hey, you stop clicking on this series and I'll stop making them, but you're not going to, so neither am I. I will talk about why everything can't happen! Oh, also Goku's clearly about to go Super Saiyan in this shot. Look at his hair, it's almost yellow. Do you even watch Dragon Ball? <laughs> 